In this presentation, we have to talk about uh, gamma theory of uh, alpha decay. This is the potential energy curve for alpha particle emission. Suppose an alpha particle is existing inside the nucleus. The nuclear forces are uh, dominating the Coulombic repulsion. But the depth of the potential well is uh, almost to 26 MeV. But the energy of the alpha particle is concerned, its value is uh, 4.2 MeV. Therefore, the possibility of a nucleus to emit an alpha particle is matter of discussion. According to classical view, the emission of alpha particle from the nucleus is impossible. But on the basis of uh, quantum aspect, we can explain the emission of alpha particle from the squirrel potential of depth uh, 26 MeV. Here, an element of atomic number Z and mass number A is emitting an alpha particle. Therefore, the created daughter nucleus is having the atomic number of Z minus 2 and the mass number of A minus 4. An electrostatic repulsion is always existing between this daughter nucleus and uh, the alpha particle. The value of the force is proportional to product of the two charges and inversely proportional to square of the perpendicular resistance existing between them. Here F is proportional to Z minus 2 into E into 2E. Here Z minus 2 into E is the charge of the daughter nucleus. 2E is the charge of the alpha particle. Then to remove the proportional design, we have introduced a constant 1 by 4 by epsilon naught. We know that uh, force equal to gradient of negative potential that is minus dV by dr. So minus dV by dr is this much. So dV equal to minus of this quantity into dr. Then V, here we have taken that one as V0, is equal to minus 1 divided by 4 by epsilon naught, 2 into z minus 2 e square into dr by r square limit varying from infinity to r because the potential is defined as the work done in moving a unit positive charge from infinite distance to a particular point against the force is called the potential at that point. If you do the integration we can get the value of v0 as 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught 2 into z minus 2 e square divided by r. Here z minus 2 is the atomic number of the daughter nucleus. Here after we have to consider z minus 2 as z. So potential v0 equal to 1 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught 2 z e square divided by r. Here z is the atomic number of the daughter nucleus. Now come to our uh, gamma theory. Gamma theory of alpha decay was developed in 1928. According to the theory, the alpha particle may exist as an entity within the nucleus. When the alpha particle is inside the nucleus, it makes to and fro motion and continuously collides with the barrier walls. See here, if the alpha particle is present inside the potential well, it makes to and fro motion and makes so many collision with the walls of the barrier. Let nu be the frequency with which the alpha particle collides with the walls to escape from the nucleus and t the transient probability in each collision then radioactive constant lambda is equal to nu into t. If v be the velocity of the particle and 2r0 is the diameter of the nucleus then velocity equal to distance by time that is 2R0 divided by T. But 1 by T is our frequency. From this relation, 1 by T equal to V divided by 2R0. So, frequency nu equal to V divided by 2R0. Therefore, decay constant lambda equal to nu into T equal to V by 2R0 into T. The value of transient probability for a barrier of constant height V0 and width A is given by the general formula t equal to e power minus 2 k into a. Here the value of k 
momentum factor is equal to 2m into v0 minus c by h cross square inside the root. Here, the width of the potential is not uniform at all the points. So that we have to separate the potential barrier into so many segments. Assume that each segment is having a thickness uh, dr. The probability of transition through a small thickness dr is given by t equal to e power minus 2 into k of r instead of here we have to put dr. Then the total probability is obtained by integrating this equation 4 t equal to integral of e power minus 2 k r dr limit varying from r0 to r1. Here r0 is the radius of the nucleus, r1 is the distance from the center of the nucleus where the kinetic energy of the alpha particle is equal to potential energy. Here the very potential. At r greater than r0, the kinetic energy of the alpha particle is greater than the potential energy and alpha particle can escape permanently from the nucleus. Beyond this region, see here the kinetic energy of the alpha particle, this is energy, is greater than the potential energy curve. So at r greater than r1, the kinetic energy of the alpha particle is greater than the potential energy and the alpha particle can escape permanently from the nucleus. Already we have had the potential energy equation V0 equal to 2 z e square divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r in our case. So to find the value of k of r that is equal to 2m into V0 minus e by h cross square substitute this value of V0. Then this is 2m by h cross square power half. Instead of V0 we have to put 2 z e square divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r minus e power 1 by 2. At r equal to r1, v0 equal to e. Say this is v0, 2 z e square, e square divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r. At r equal to r1, we can write v0 equal to e. So e equal to 2 z e square divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r1. Here, 2 z e square divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r is taken for our account. 2 z e square divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r. Multiply the numerator by r1 and the denominator by r1. This is modified as 2 z e square divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r1 into r1 by r. We know that 2 z e square divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r1 is our e. So this is e into r1 by r. So instead of this term, we have to put e into r1 by r. See, the k of r is modified as 2m by h cross square power half e into r1 by r minus c. From this equation take the term e outside that is e power half. So 2m e by h cross square entire power half into r1 by r minus 1 power half. Now take the equation 5 ln t equal to minus 2 into integral of k of r dr. Substitute the value of k of r minus 2 into integral r0 to r1 2m e by h cross square power half r1 by r minus 1 power half into dr. Put r by r1, not r1 by r, r by r1 is equal to cos square pi. Then r equal to r1 cos square pi. dr is equal to 2 r1 cos pi into minus sin pi. So dr equal to minus 2 r1 sin pi cos pi d pi. Now take this term r1 by r minus 1 power half is equal to instead of r1 by r we have to write 1 by cos square pi minus this 1 entire power half into dr because r by r1 is cos square pi so r1 by r is 1 divided by cos square pi then substitute the value of dr dr is equal to minus 2 r1 cos pi sin pi d pi this is cross multiply 1 minus cos square pi divided by cos square pi into this quantity sin square pi plus cos square pi is equal to 1 so 1 minus cos square pi equal to sin square pi sin square pi cos square pi power half is equal to sin pi by cos pi into this quantity so cos pi cos pi it cancel so the rest of the quantity is minus 2 r1 sin square pi d pi but 2 sin square x equal to 1 minus cos 2 x use this formula so this is modified as minus 2 r1 sin square pi d pi is equal to minus r1 into 1 minus cos 2 pi into d pi. Now integral 
R1 by R minus 1 power half into dr is equal to minus R1 into integral of 1 minus cos 2 pi n tire is multiplied by d pi this is separate to two integrals minus R1 into 1 into d pi d pi integral d pi minus integral cos 2 pi d pi d pi integral is pi cos 2 pi integral value is uh, sin 2 pi divided by 2 then minus r1 into pi into this is 2 sin theta cos theta 2 sin pi cos pi all divided by 2 then this is minus r1 into pi then sin pi cos pi limit varying from r0 to r1 already we have had r by r1 is equal to cos square pi then cos pi equal to r by r1 power half we should find out the value of cos pi sin pi and pi then pi equal to cos inverse of r by r1 power half you know that sin square pi plus cos square pi is equal to 1 so sin square pi equal to 1 minus cos square pi that is equal to 1 minus r by r1 then sin pi equal to 1 minus r by r1 power half put up all these values in equation 9 so minus r1 into then this pi value is cos inverse of r by r1 power half then sin pi value this much then cos pi is r by r1 power half limit varying from r0 to r1 if you apply the upper limit all the terms are cancelled minus of lower limit so minus to minus plus r1 cos inverse of r0 by r1 power half minus 1 minus r0 by r1 power half into r0 by r1 power half now equation 5 becomes this is equation 5 ln t equal to minus 2 into 2 me by h cross square power half integral this quantity instead of this we have to put up this value so minus 2 into this power half r1 into the rest of the quantities i have substituted since the potential barrier is relatively wide r1 is far far greater than r0 cos inverse of r0 by r1 power half is equal to pi by 2 minus r0 by r1 power half and 1 minus r0 by r1 power 1 by 2 equal to 1 the value of cos inverse of r0 by r1 power half is equal to pi by 2 minus r0 by r1 power half the value of 1 minus r0 by r1 is equal to 1 so substitute these two results in equation 10 you can get ln t equal to minus 2 into 2 me by h cross square power half r1 then pi by 2 minus r0 by r1 minus r0 by r1 power half because this quantity equal to 1 this is equal to minus 2 into 2 me divided by h cross square power half r1 into pi by 2 minus 2 times r0 by r1 power half this is minus 2 into 2 me by h cross square power half then pi by 2 into r1 minus 2 into this is r1 this is r1 power half so that r1 r0 entire power half you know that r1 is equal to 2z e square divided by 4 pi epsilon naught into e substitute here minus 2 into 2 me by h cross square power half pi by 2 into instead of r1 this much is r1 power half so that minus 2 into 2 z e square divided by 4 pi epsilon naught e power half then r0 power half this is minus 2 into 2 me by h cross square power half then 2 to get cancelled, pi pi get cancelled. So z e square divided by 4 epsilon naught into e minus 2 into z e square divided by 2 pi epsilon naught into e power half. Just I have simplified these two terms. This is 4 into multiply this into this and write as a first term. Minus 2 into minus 2 plus 4. 2 me by h cross square power half into rest of the quantity then minus 2 into 2 me by h cross square power half into this quantity you may if you simplify you may get the terms like this here the value of 4e by h cross m by pi epsilon naught power half is equal to 2.97 and e square by h cross epsilon naught m by 2 power half is equal to 3.95 so ln t equal to 2.97 z power of r0 power half minus 3.95 z e power minus half here r0 is in fermi and e is in uh, million electron volt the radioactive constant lambda equal to v divided by 2 r0 into t 
then non lambda equal to ln v by 2 or 0 plus uh, ln t then ln lambda equal to ln v by 2 or 0 and uh, substitute the value of uh, ln t this is the value of ln t we may get the equation of the form 12 then change this ln into log which means that they have to use the base term log lambda base term is equal to log to the base term v divided by 2 or 0 plus 1.29 z power half r0 power half minus 1.72 z e power uh, minus half. If you convert uh, log into log, we can get the equation of form 11, uh, uh, equation of form 13, not uh, 11, this is equation 13. Now we have to draw a graph. A graph is drawn between log to the base term lambda and z e power minus r for various alpha particle emitting nuclei. A straight line is obtained and the slope of the line is minus 1.72. The intercept on the y axis gives the value of log v by 2r0 plus 1.29 z power half r0 power half. The value of r0 Calculated from this relation is almost similar to the value obtained in the scattering experiment. The relation 12 describes the reason for an alpha particle with uh, higher energy having a short life period and long half life with uh, low energy, which means that uh, suppose an alpha particle is having higher energy, its half-life period is uh, very low. On the other hand, if the alpha particle is having lower energy, its half-life period is uh, very high. That's all about the conclusion of our gamma theory.